Okay, first of all, um, I'm really happy to be here and I joined the last two days at FOSS Backstage, the other event. And it's great to be able to learn and share about the open source community and particularly in design today. I love that we can do this. Um, my name is Nuna Dionisio. I'm from Portugal and I'm a UX product designer at Percona. Percona uh, is an open source company that specializes in solutions um, for a polyglot databases. So like MySQL, MongoDB and Postgres, for example. Uh, prior to Percona, I was working in a completely different environment. So I was working at Bosch in the automotive aftermarket sector. So I was developing remote, developing remote diagnostics uh, products. So I'm quite new to the open source world myself, so I've been learning a lot along the way. Um, my goal for today is to take you through the journey of our product and the product that I've been part of uh, since 2022. <laughs> Um, and explain to you what we faced as challenges, how we overcome it, and what were the outcomes of it. So, going back to 2022, we had this initiative, let's implement a DBAS solution in PMM. And it's quite technical, but I'm going to explain to you what is a DBAS. So, DBAS stands for Database as a Service, and it's a cloud it's a cloud-based solution where users can access and use a managed database without the need to handle infrastructure or maintenance tasks themselves. And we wanted to implement this in PMM. And PMM is one of Percona's products and it's widely known in the area, um, in the field of databases. You cannot see the image properly, I think, but um, it stands for Percona Monitoring and Management. Um, and it's a tool that will help you monitor and manage and observe your databases. So it looks pretty much like this. There are some graphs here. You cannot see them in the, uh, with this view. But it is a, a, a tool where there's a lot of data and uh, insights you can get for your databases. So just like any other feature we have in PMM, we wanted to implement these DBAS here also. And so just like a lot of other open source projects, development started without a designer uh, in the beginning of 2022. So we started coding and implementing this solution uh, without having our users' needs in the first place. Uh, and only by the end of the year, a designer joined the team. In this case, I was the one joining the team. And I wasn't even at 100% capacity at this project, so I was just working um, I would say like 20, 30% capacity here. And I'm gonna share with you what I faced uh, and the challenge, the big challenges we faced uh, when developing this DBAS solution in PMM. So PMM is layered on top of Grafana and Grafana, as some of you might know, is an open source analytics and monitoring platform that is used to visualize and analyze data from various sources. And so we use uh, Grafana, um, as our design system also in PMM. So um, there were some challenges we faced because it might look awesome that we have a design system and a stable one and a great one that we can work with. But on the other hand, we struggled a bit. And some points we struggled with was, for example, customization. It was a bit limited because if we wanted to customize our components and the experience behind them, uh, we had some struggles because of the components that were already coming from this design system. Over-reliance, we were depending on only one design system and that can limit also the user experience that we create. Updates and maintenance, I would say this is the biggest one because uh, just, all, just like uh, on the implementation side and the design side, we had to maintain and update these components every time there was a new update from them coming from Grafana, um, and which would lead to duplicate design work as well, because we had to duplicate all their components in Figma so we could upkeep our product, our project in Figma as well and share it with the developers. So this is a big challenge we faced, having a design system that we couldn't control completely and were dependent on. So moving forward to 2023, uh, we had, in the beginning of 2023, 
the date of our release of this product, the Divas, in PMM. And when, when we got to the date, oh, I'm sorry, you cannot see it. <laughs> the contrasts are not great. Uh, oh, perfect, thank you. Maybe it helps a little. <laughs> Does it help? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this was what our product looked like um, back in the beginning of 2023. So we had PMM as the main structure, and this is just a screenshot. I'm not gonna dive into the technical details of what is here, but basically it's the process of creating a database. So there's a bunch of selectors and toggles that are very technical and that the user would need to perform and act to create their databases. Um, and we got some feedback at this stage, so we, we were getting feedback from both internal users and external users. Um, and although the feedback was mostly technical and lack of features and immaturity for at this stage for the product, we already knew that we wanted to assess a lot of usability and experience issues we had here. Uh, and we knew it was not ideal to have it inside PMM as well. And so this is when our shift happened. So because um, of all these reasons that I just mentioned and for strategic reasons for, for reasons for the company, we decided to not release this product as it was. And we had to shift now the way we work together, we collaborated and how we think about product and what we put out there, right? So when, so back in, I think, April last year, uh, we started collaborating in the triads form. For example, uh, the designer, the product manager, the backend and the front end developer are sit together to define the product, discuss, uh, discuss the user needs. Uh, user testing became like a crucial part of our process development. We started testing everything before, well, almost everything, before a single line of code was written. Um, and this was a big shift for us because we were not working like this and in this structure. Um, so this is when uh, Percona Everest was born. And Percona Everest is our standalone version of what I just explained. So the Diva solution in PMM, we figured that was not working, so we went for a standalone version. And Percona Everest is a cloud-native database platform to deploy and manage uh, enterprise grade, Postgres, Mongo, and MySQL database clusters. And this was our newly born and now nine months old product. Um, and I'm gonna explain to you the two big shifts we made. And one of them was creating our design system. And um, a lot of you may know the benefits of having a design system, but in particular for us, because of the challenge I just explained, uh, using Grafana's design system, it was really important, important to have one that we could control. And we started creating it on a need basis. Uh, we're just a team of two designers, it's me and Pedro here. And uh, we, we don't want to maintain a lot of components that we don't need, so we just create the components we really need um, and maintain. But obviously we have scalability in mind because we want to achieve an open design system and open for contributions by the end of this year, maybe, let's see. Um, so this was a big and important thing we added to our process. And although it's only one product right now, Percona Everest, that is consuming from this design system, we know that we will have more in the future and hopefully more in the community. And the other big thing we added was usability testing. As I said before, we started testing, testing, testing. And this was great for us because we started getting a lot of feedback, good and bad, for the features that we were trying to develop. And in terms of usability, it was also great for us because something we thought would work just simply wouldn't. So these were the two big, big differences that we included in our process uh, that we were not doing before and having the users in mind first. Uh, this became critical for us. So coming back, coming to the moment now, 2024, we had two weeks ago our beta release. And I'm very happy that we've been having 
a lot of good feedback and also constructive one that we need uh, already to evaluate and develop further. Um, but our users have been telling us that we are delivering a quick and easy way to deploy our, their databases, uh, intuitive, and this is great. But also it's, it, it's even better to hear some uh, constructive feedback and things that are missing for them and that are really, really important for them to use our product. So I'm going to show you a little bit of how it looks like right now um, using our new design system and having the users in mind. So basically, the, the, the page that I just shared before, the one that we turn, where we turned out the lights, uh, was a, a page where the user was creating their databases. And now we created it in a wizard form where we guide the user through a journey, through what he needs to select. Uh, we pre-fill everything that we can, uh, so it's a smooth experience for them and they don't have to think too much about it because it's a quite complex task. On the side, they're, they're able now to see like a summary of what they're selecting. Um, we also, one of the things that we had received as feedback is that it was really hard to troubleshoot something and we started having this in mind uh, because of such technical uh, labels and namings that we have here. We started including tooltips, uh, actions where the user is redirected to the documentation, just like the learn more on top. Uh, and this became also a lot of, um, very, very frequent in our product. Uh, this is just another page of the wizard where the user can set the backups that uh, they want to run for their databases. And all these alerts, this information that we are now sharing, it's quite new and wasn't present before. Okay, so what did we learn? Uh, we learned a lot <laughs> and especially prioritizing user experience was the biggest thing we learned, of course, because it costs, it can cost more to not do it and to not include designers from the beginning because in the end we developed for almost a year a product that we then had to refactor and change completely. So it was a lot of effort and costs that we didn't consider in the beginning. So prioritizing user experience was a big, big lesson learned for the company and for us. Multidisciplinary teams and working alongside the developers, the product managers uh, and any other stakeholders was super important for us because we are now aware of the business side, the development side and the user side having the control of our design system, as I mentioned before, and the creation and growing a design culture within the company because Percona was not a user-centric com uh, company. And we little by little know that we are having a good impact on it and we can bring uh, with this testing, with this feedback, we can bring a design culture and share the importance of having designers in it. So this was the journey we had from 2022 to now, February 2024, uh, where we had our beta release. I hope it was helpful to share this journey with you and that you can take some of these lessons with you as well. So thank you very much. You can reach out to me and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, thank you. Questions? Yeah. So, excellent story, so happy that worked out for you. But can you talk about this clear, dramatic shift that happened from the old way of doing things, which is clearly very old school, and then it sounds like all of a sudden the light went on and everybody wanted to do UX design. How did that magic switch get flipped? Well, basically in terms of also company strategy, there were a lot of shifts at that time and we decided to reduce the focus, uh, well, no, uh, have more focus, sorry, and not be working on several uh, small bits of the product and try to have a more um, stable and less, in the end, less working uh, projects that we were doing. And this made us focus and not be, so I was working, for example, at 20, 30% in that piece of project, but I was working on others, right? So I was working like three, four of those. And then I stopped working on uh, four projects and focused on only one. 
So this was kind of like how we shifted our focus. Any more questions, folks? Great presentation. Thank you for that. Quick question for you. So when you change your design system, um, I'm curious how your uh, users kind of reacted to one versus the other. Were they major shifts or were these minor tweaks in terms of, you know, what they were seeing in terms of some of the, you know, information architecture, things like that? Or were they like major shifts? Because ultimately, if you think about what they're doing when they're picking their data sources and curating, the functionality would, I would imagine, I couldn't see your first slide, otherwise I would have done a quick scan. But I'm, I'm curious, like, were they major shifts or were they minor ones? And then how were your mm -hmm. kind of feedback from the users? Uh, we didn't have this problem, really, because... Uh, the only product that is adopting this peak design system now is uh, Percona Everest. So it's completely independent one. So it's not like we updated the old product. It's a complete new one. Uh, and users are just now being faced with it right now. Any more questions? If not, I have one. Um, I love to see a design system come, become open source. And uh, anytime somebody talks about it, my first question is, how would you want designers to contribute to it? Like, what would be your ideal scenario for open source design contributions? To be honest, I don't think I'm able to reply to that right now. <laughs> we're, we're at the moment working on it, and we're defining exactly that <laughs> right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe no, later no, I will cool. have Amazing. later in the year. Okay. Uh, if there's not any more questions, we'll say thank you again to Nuna. Thanks, everyone. Bye.